So, uh, good morning, everyone, and, and welcome. We're still people dropping in, so. Um, so welcome. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. Today uh, we have with us Andoni Moral Inta from Inta from Space Programs at Inta. He is gonna he's gonna give a talk on on uh, Raman spectroscopy for space applications. Um, Andoni um, holds a PhD in physics and a master in aerospace engineering. He has developed uh, the, his last years of career as instrument project manager and national project manager for the Spanish contribution to the Raman laser spectrometer at ExoMars at ESA. And, um, mm, and he is member of the Rover Science Operation Working Group at Microscale and has participated in the OXIA Planum ExoMars landing site mapping activities at the macro scale. Uh, so welcome here. As you know, also INTA has recently published 25 PhD positions that are closing today. So he might be also talking about that at the end of the talk. Thanks uh, those here in situ and also those uh, online for attending the seminar. And I welcome you, Donnie. It's a pleasure to come in and all yours. Thank you very much, Manuel, for inviting me today, this morning. And thank you, everybody, for coming, for assisting this talk. Um, as you said, I, am a, I work at INTA as a aerospace engineer, as pro, uh, project manager in several projects, and uh, mainly devoted on the, on the development of new uh, instrumentation for planetary exploration. So um, I will try to uh, explain briefly what, an overview of what, what I want to talk today. First, I would like to give you uh, an introduction to what is or what we consider planetary exploration. Uh, second, I would like to introduce you about the Raman spectroscopy, uh, why we feel this is that important and why uh, we feel this is a, a very nice tool for the planetary exploration. Later on, I will briefly explain um, what is RLS, uh, Raman Laser Spectrometer, the instrument uh, that is right now uh, on the ExoMars rover to be launched uh, next year. And uh, also Raman Laser Assembly, uh, part of an, another Raman instrument that will be uh, uh, placed in the rover on the MMX mission, a Japanese uh, Mars and Moon Ex Explorer mission. And later on, a uh, brief, uh, my point of view, what, what, what I consider would be the next steps in, the, in this planetary exploration and how the Raman spectroscopy uh, will have a, 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 an important role on, on, on this. So first, what we consider um, planetary exploration, why we explore, right? Um, we explore because we are humans, because it's in our a, uh, DNA. Uh, we will always have wanted to go farther, to go uh, uh, climb the highest mountain or reach the poles or now uh, travel to the moon. All right, so uh, we need to do that because we are humans. Uh, it's in, in, in our nature. But we also explore to understand why we are here, to uh, try to answer a uh, fundamental question, a philosophic question for, for human being. Uh, is that uh, are we alone or are we uh, in the universe or uh, uh, we are a lucky shot uh, some time ago, a piece of uh, asteroid arrived to the Earth with life on it, and then we develop ourselves, or uh, life is ubiquitous in the universe. We can, if we give the proper conditions for that, we can, we can find life uh, in other places, in other, you know. So um, uh, trying to answer this question is why we explore, why we are, we travel to the moon, and why we are now traveling to Mars. So. That's um, the reason why we explore. <clears throat> For planetary exploration, um, where we should we look? What, what's our playground? Where, where are we looking for? Um, we are looking for, uh, we are now, um, we call exploration for exploration. We need to be very close. We need to be there. We need to uh, touch it almost. 
so we uh, we don't look exo for exoplanets. That's a very interesting thing, but it's not uh, uh, planetary exploration. We don't look for very long away galaxies. We pl we play in our solar system. We are we are looking for places where we can arrive. Doesn't ma doesn't mean that it is going to be easy, but uh, that's what we want to do. So we will uh, go to other planets in our solar system, but also to other moons and other asteroids or comets or whatever. So this is where where we want to uh, we, we we do our science. We do our 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 exploration. For the um, how do we uh, do the, our planetary exploration? How wh wh what is the paths with the steps we take along this this um, exploration? All right. So first, first thing we do is we usually look from Earth. We uh, uh, two centuries ago, uh, uh, people were very interested in on Mars about their channels and so on. They they felt that it could be inhabited, and uh, all right, we. Uh, that was our goal to, to reach that and uh, to understand why these channels were there. So later on in the 50s and in the 60s, we started with a uh, flyby exploration. We, for, for, for human beings, it was a big challenge to be able to point at, at, at that red dot in the, in, the, in the sky and reach it and uh, take some pictures from there. Later on, we uh, have some orbits. We were able to land in the in 1976, we took very nice pictures of there, and we were uh, very surprised about how uh, this uh, desert we found there. Later on, uh, this was uh, made in, on, a, on a platform, right? So we, we landed and we observed what we have around. Uh, but after that, we felt then the need, the necessity to to move over 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 the planet to look for different things and to uh, uh, look for. Uh, different rocks and understand how this planet became that way. Later on, all uh, right, now we can move on the surface. That's great. Now we want to look below the surface. We want to fly. We want to uh, uh, in, uh, go from the two dimensions to the three, uh, to the three one. So uh, we are looking in the subsurface. We are trying to fly, to move fo uh, faster, uh, to be able to explore uh, in, a, in, a, in a more uh, quick way. And all right, next, and this is uh, where we are right now. This is uh, Ingenuity. This is the Perseverance rover, and this is the ExoMars uh, rover that will be launched uh, next year, as I said before, uh, that will explore uh, uh, up to two meters below the, the Martian surface. So this is where we are right now. What's the future? We expect to have some uh, samples returned from the Mars surface. This is the Mars sample return mission. Uh, this will take place, I don't know when, it's not clear, but probably in uh, this decade, uh, by the end of this decade and the next one, uh, we will be able to reach Mars, land on it, uh, take some samples, uh, launch it to a low orbit on Mars, and then uh, when the conditions are appropriate, uh, with, with the relative position between Mars and, and the Earth, uh, send it back to, to, to Earth, to, so we can uh, a study the same way we are doing now with a uh, Martian sample, uh, sorry, with the moon samples, be able to study Martian samples on Earth. Uh, this will be, these are the steps we will follow until we are able to uh, travel, uh, the, the human, uh, human beings can, are able to travel to Mars. So this is how things work. So, um, all right, we are, all the time we are doing this previous process. We have uh, uh, some objectives that we are we fixed in order to understand where we are, the risks we need to face, and uh, how uh, how the instrumentation uh, need to be developed in order to answer this 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 question. So first, we need to understand why there was water on Mars, why we uh, it was uh, habitability. Right, we we know that it was there were uh, big. Uh, lakes, big uh, seas on, on Mars. There was also atmosphere. So we know that th this could lead to uh, some habi habitability conditions. Um, could we find some re um, rest of life on, on, the, on the previous uh, uh, eras on, on Mars? That, that, that's the, the we are fo following this, um, trying to answer these questions. 
So we need to understand Mars, the, the climate, the geology, and later on, only when all these things have been uh, understood, we need to understand which are the hazards so we can prepare for a travel to, to Mars. For all these scientific objectives, uh, we need to, under, to study not only the, the surface, but also the atmosphere, the subsurface. We need to develop some instrumentation. So that's why we are, that's why I'm here. That's because we develop scientific instrumentation trying to answer these questions. So what is Raman spectroscopy, right? So Raman spectroscopy was uh, discovered uh, something like uh, in 1928, uh, almost 100 years ago, uh, by this uh, uh, Indian sci scientist, um, who is Varnachan uh, Raman. Uh, he discovered that when we illuminate some sample, uh, there was some uh, very low uh, uh, energy uh, jump uh, in, the, in, the, in the molecules, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the chemical uh, com com compounds. Uh, that was um, that was uh, proper from this kind of molecule. So this was kind of some kind of fingerprint of different uh, comp co compounds, different uh, molecules, and this give you a very uh, interesting information about, about the samples you are analyzing. This signal was very very weak, so we uh, it was something like six to nine orders of magnitude uh, weaker than the that, that the illumination source where, where we we applied. But it was there, so we needed to just to uh, remove all the non-desired light that was there and characterize this signal, this backscatter signal, in order to characterize the, the samples we were using. So this is a very powerful tool in order to be able to characterize uh, from the mineralogy and the, the geology or the, any chemical compound that we want to analyze. So how Roman spectroscopy works? It is a very nice technique because it is very fast. You can uh, illuminate with your uh, monochromatic layer source in a sample and you will have the in, an immediate uh, answer from, from it. It is very fast. It is non-destructive, so the, the laser doesn't need to be very powerful. You don't uh, need to uh, burn the sample or whatever. So you can, uh, this, uh, uh, after, being analyzed by Roman spectroscopy, you can analyze with another technique, so there's no need to, to damage the sample. You don't need to uh, prepare the sample. You not you don't need to uh, make some kind of solution with water or whatever. You don't need to clean it. You know you don't need to uh, uh, prepare it in some in some way. You just take it, analyze it, and you get the data. So that's very very uh, powerful in that way. We, we we as I said before, we get a lot of information from the Roman spectroscopy because we can analyze. The, not only the, the chemical products, but also the molecules, which is very nice to for my, my mineralogy and also for looking for biomarkers. Uh, we don't need a lot of power, just the lasers, as I said before, they are not very powerful. Uh, with this could be pretty well packaged, it could be pretty well, uh, not need a lot of room, uh, very low mass. You can adapt it, you can do it, uh, we can la later on we will talk about how Raman spectroscopy could be done. We could, you can do it almost in contact. You can do it remotely. So it is very flexible. And you can combine it with other techniques, as I said before, because it is, not, it is non destructive. And uh, so, and it is, and because it is the way it is done on Earth. Whenever you want to analyze a sample, you don't use just one technique. You go to a lab and you analyze the sample with different, different, uh, with several different techniques. So that is why uh, uh, it is easily. Uh, you can combine it easily, and that is why uh, we feel that, uh, right, the Roman spectroscopy is uh, very nice for planetary exploration. So, said this, uh, how is Roman spectroscopy in, uh, for planetary exploration today? Up to today, have been developed four different Raman instruments for, for planetary exploration. RLS, which is the one that will be flown, hopefully, in September 2022, uh, will be launched to Mars. This is the one we've worked at, at INTA very, uh, very deeply. SuperCam, this is a remote Raman uh, combined with a LIPS, LIPS spectroscopy. It is right now on Perseverance rover. It is working right now. But because it is combined with different other techniques, uh, it is not very um, optimized for Raman, let's say this way. 
a serlock, which is another ultraviolet uh, Raman instrument uh, placed on the on the, uh, working on the Perseverance rover, and the RAX instrument, uh, which is the Raman uh, spectrometer for MMX, which is the mission I talked before, a Japanese mission to be launched in 2024, uh, so uh, for the for the Martian moons exploration. Uh, at this point, from INTA, we have deeply worked with uh, RLS. This uh, I will explain a little later about uh, our participation on, on, on this um, instrument. Uh, we worked uh, briefly on the calibration target on the SuperCam with the University of Valladolid, uh, testing and integration uh, with the testing and integration of the, of the calibration target. And we are uh, uh, the, um, we are we will be delivering the laser unit for the RAX instrument. So we are also deeply involved in this um, other instrument. So, um, all right, so what is ExoMars mission and what is RLS? ExoMars mission uh, is a European, mainly a European mission, but also with the support of Roscosmos. Uh, it was split in two missions, one in, launched in 2016 with a TGO, the Trace Gaze Orbiter, uh, which is a, an orbiter that we, we, is right now working on Mars, analyzing the Mars atmosphere and also uh, to be used as you know relay for the communications with all of the other rovers that are right now on Mars. Uh, that is the 2016 mission, and it will and the other mission, the 2022 that will be launched in September next year. Uh, it is um, it is uh, made by two main units: the lander, which is you can see there. Uh, will be a fixed platform. Uh, it is mainly a Russian one, uh, with some payloads uh, not only from Russia but also from INTA, and the and the rover. The rover that will be uh, will be deployed on after the landing of the, the platform and will be roving along Mars for several shows, days. Uh, let's say this way, uh, hopefully. So, which is the payload on the on the on the on the rover? There is a panoramic camera. There is a spectrometer on the mast. Uh, they will be looking for some interesting objectives uh, on where to travel. They will help for the navigation. There is some radars that will uh, let us know what is under the Martian surface. So looking for interesting places to drill. There's a, a camera that will allow us to check in very, very close perspective the samples that we want to analyze. And a, a drill that will allow us, as I said before, to take some samples uh, up to two meters depth of the uh, uh, below the Ram the, the Mars Martian surface, and then there is an uh, within the, the 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 rover body there is a small laboratory let's say this way for three additional spectrometers an infrared a Raman and a mass spectrometer the Raman one the Raman RLS the Raman laser spectrometer is is uh, 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 an Spanish instrument uh, it is. Uh, 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 principal investigator is coming from uh, University of Valladolid, but has been developed mainly, almost all of it, on at, at the INTA uh, in Spain. So this is how it looks like. The this is the ALD, as I said before, the analyt analytically drawer, which is within the rover. This is not, this is fully covered in the rover, so no, no access from dust or light or other uh, aggressive temperatures. This is the the main unit, the spectrometer. Which is made of a collimator, diffraction grating, collector, and a, and a detector, a CCD. This was designed and integrated by INTA in Spain, except for the CCD that was de uh, de um, delivered by uh, Leicester University in UK. This is the uh, instrument control and excitation unit, which are different electronic boards with the power, with the uh, onboard computer, with the software, and with the laser. This tiny uh, unit here. Uh, which is, has been developed uh, by INTA uh, with some other, many other uh, providers, but developed and integrated and tested by INTA. It is the, the key point of the corner point, the cornerstone of uh, this instrument. The laser and the optic of the spectrometer are those that are very critical for the final performances of the instrument. So these critical uh, units were INTA and Spain responsibility, and these are the key of why this uh, the spectrometer, this Raman spectrometer, was the first one qualified for space applications. It will not, it will not be the first one 
in flight, but it was the first one the delivered and um, and qualified. And this sorry, and this one, this unit here, is the optical head. So for Raman spectroscopy, we use a monochromatic source. It is a laser, a green laser, uh, five five hundred thirty-two nanometers. We inject this light coming from here into the optical head. We focus on the sample, which is placed here. We uh, take this Raman signal scattered from the from the from the from the sample. We filter all the non-desired light on the on the optics on the optical head. We take this Raman signal into the spectrometer. We diffract this light. We uh, push it into into a detector. This detector is, re is read by the electronics, and then we get the the um, the Raman spectra, so we can uh, interpret this, this data in order to uh, see which kind of sample we are analyzing. This is a quick overview of how the, the, the very complex international consortium we've been leading from INTA uh, with all, lots of uh, different institutions from uh, France, UK, and Germany. So uh, uh, let's say it was a main or one of the main difficulties we found, not only for the technical, but also for the management. And this is what we were able to deliver. Not only these models, uh, you know, this is a typical models policy on a, on a, on a, on a, on a uh, space program uh, development. We, we developed a breadboard and a structural and thermal model, an engineering and qualification model, and finally the flight model, which is the one which is now integrated on the rover. Uh, all these uh, integrations and characterizations and qualification was done at INTA. So another important mission we are involved in is uh, the MMX, it is the Mars and Moon's Exploration uh, Mission. It is led by JAXA, Japanese uh, Space Agency, and it will be uh, devoted for the study of Deimos and Phobos, mainly Phobos. Um, why? Because they want to understand uh, why uh, these very strange moons, they have our uh, Mars, and uh, they, it is also foreseen to take some samples and return it back to the Earth. To, to the Earth. Uh, you know, uh, these Japanese uh, Hayabusa, Hayabusa 2 missions, they are used to take some samples, very few grams or milligrams of, of dust on, the, on, on this asteroid and return it back to the Earth. So, but this is not the only part of the, of the mission. It will be a small rover, which will be uh, something like 20 to 30 kilograms rover, very small one. But in this rover, there's a, a, a Ram, also a Raman spectrometer. From, <clears throat> this is the, the RAX instrument. It will be placed here, has two main units, the RAX spectrometer module and the Raman laser assembly. This laser assembly, it is the one respons uh, responsibility for, from INTA. This is the, this is the, this is the laser. Uh, you cannot appreciate very well here, but it, I can tell you this is uh, something like four centimeters long by three centimeters width, something like that, and two centimeters high. Uh, this, also, this is also a, an, another development we do at INTA. Uh, we uh, align, we uh, place all these uh, tiny uh, optical components on the, to be able to achieve some resonators. We pack the, the, the light. We uh, so we we condition it this light in, in order to uh, achieve the, uh, a good laser uh, signal to uh, ex uh, to um, excitate the, the samples. So, and now very briefly, uh, um, uh, what is the future, or at least what is our vision of the future in the planetary exploration? It is true that we said we will come back to Mars. That's for sure. Uh, with the Mars sample return. We want to also to, uh, these are missions that are already almost approved. The, we will visit some uh, sat, uh, moons from Saturn, the Sine Higgins and Dragonfly to Titan. Uh, there is also big interest in studying the icy giants, the Neptune and Uranus. We will go for Venus in the next decades, that's for sure. Europa Lander, this is a very icy moon, very interesting from Jupiter. All these icy moons are uh, the goals right now of the planetary exploration. We are, we are looking at those uh, objectives. But first, before going to all these very interesting places, we will go back to the moon uh, during this decade. Why? Uh, you will say, all right, the answer is in this Artemis mission. You will have heard about this for sure. 
uh, we will go back to the moon, but not because we, want, we are interested in the moon, not now, but be because we are interested on Mars. So this is the, the step we need to take before flying to Mars. If we want to arrive to Mars, we need to, uh, to learn how to fly to the moon, go and go, uh, go forward and backward in order to, uh, we can need to place some uh, base on the moon. Uh, we need to be able to fly very easily to the moon. We want to uh, learn how to develop all the technologies needed for going to the moon. And only w when we are able to do this travel, we will be ready for going to Mars. So I'm for sure we will, we will arrive to Mars. I don't know if in 20 or 30 or 50 years from now, but we will, we will arrive there. And, but before we need to learn how to do it. So that's why we are going back to the moon during this decade. Uh, right. So once we arrive to the moon, what we need to learn about that, we need to learn to the in situ resource utilization. This is the, what we are talking now. Uh, we need to identify interesting materials. We need to characterize them, extract and process them. So if we want to have a permanent base on the moon, we need to be able to take some water from the ice. We need to combine it with this uh, carbon dioxide in order to get some oxygen for breathing and uh, methane for uh, methane for, for, for fuel, for, for being able to come back. This, we need to learn to do this on the moon in order to be able to do, to do that in the future from Mars. So for this mineralogy mining on uh, ice and volatile characterization, we will need some spectroscopy. So uh, Raman spectroscopy will have a relevant paper on, on a relevant role in this uh, characterization, in this uh, new exploration of the moon. But also we, are, we, will, be, we will use the moon for uh, as a test bench for, for future developments of new instrumentation. So what we need to do from the round point of view, we need to be uh, lighter, we need to consume less energy, less power. We need to be able to take our own decisions on board. We need to, we don't need to send back to Earth to take, to feel what it, it is interesting or not. We need to do it by our own. Uh, so we need to improve our performances, uh, better resolution, signature, radio, accuracy on the instruments and we need to be ready for very harsh environments uh, traveling to europe or some other icy moons from saturn or jupiter it is not that easy and the, the environment uh, mainly from the radiation point of view is much more harsh that we are that we, the one we have even on mars or on the moon so right now next generation of Raman spectroscopy what we will be developing right now we need to be able to develop some uh, remote Raman, some standoff Raman. So we need, don't want to need to go to that place to analyze the sample uh, with almost a contact uh, technique, but we want to do it in a range of meters. So that's the most interesting thing. It is already done, it's true. This is working right now with uh, Supercam on Perseverance, but we need to uh, improve these performances. Uh, we also need to be able to combine this with uh, other Raman uh, spectrometers uh, in the range of centimeters with uh, uh, placed, placing some optical head in a robotic arm or uh, even uh, some uh, 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 laboratory within the rover with, in the, with the contact technique. So this will lead to a lower mass volume power uh, needs for this kind of mission. But we also want to combine it with other techniques with the laser induced breakdown spectroscopy, X-ray diffraction, infrared cameras. So uh, this has, we have learned that if we combine two different techniques, the result we obtain, it is not just the uh, addition of one of the uh, two of them, but uh, it is much more powerful. So this is where we need to go uh, in the future, combining these techniques. And finally, um, on the laser's point of view, this is, uh, as I said before, another uh, cornerstone of our developments. We need to improve our performances. We need to control the power and wavelength. We need to uh, make devices uh, capable to, to bear with rough hard conditions. We need to develop different other techniques, uh, modifying the uh, wavelength in order to uh, improve the, the spectrometer uh, performances. So these are the, our challenges. This is where we are working right now. And I think that's all. I don't know how we are in time. Thank you very much for your attention.